has OpenAI just killed software engineers? Well, in today's video, we're going to look at Codex, which is a cloud-based software engineering agent that can work in many tasks in parallel, powered by Codex 1. Think of it like Klein or Ruacode or something like this, in a virtual machine, which you can have one per task and it can delegate to other tasks, so like Ruacode Orchestrator or something like that, or Orchestrate. Basically like that, but inside OpenAI, which is pretty cool. It connects up to GitHub and stuff. Let's start off this video by actually having a look at the demo. So I'll mute them and I'll do the talking. But essentially here, you select your GitHub. So you connect your GitHub up and you can select an environment you want Codex to then work in. Now, once you've selected your environment, you can then change your data controls, which I thought they just slip over there, which is a bit dodgy. But basically you can then let the model run on your data, train on your data or not, as you can see from this here. We'll let them continue through. And then they have some tasks which they think are good starting points for people. So let me check this. Why is it in like 480p, 1080p? There we go. Explain the code base to a newcomer. Pick a part that seems important, find a bug, fix it, or get a new task, which is all really cool. I think with the <laughs> leveraging this kind of thing, and we'll show you how they actually do it in a moment, but basically it's kind of turning this whole process into redefining what a why is that not going away redefining what a, an engineer actually does um and they're becoming more of a supervisor but also kind of like a product manager of sorts because then it comes down to you only have limited capacity so then you're going to have agents which are running these agents but you only have limited you know capacity for input as well so you know there's going to be a lot of agents that are all running at a gazillion miles an hour but then how are we going to consume them? That's something I always wonder. Anyway, so basically here, you can see all the tasks. So now that he has given it a task, um, or he actually has these other tasks here, and you have three tasks that are running in parallel, all doing something. So which one did he select? Oh, all three of them. <laughs> um, and they all run now. Uh, concurrently, all in their own little VMs, and they go away and do stuff. And you can see he's adding another one there. Um, and you can see that he has actually one that's scheduled for every day, where um, it does this here. I want to keep the code base maintainable and bug free, read through and check everything looks good and there's no outstanding to do's. And it'll go through that, and you can see that it gives you back this kind of like markdown response, but then it has suggested fixes like this here. Um, so you can actually see it and you can get it to run the task. Um, so you go, see there, view the task, and then you can see it step by step actually running through, which is pretty cool as to what it does. And then at the end, so let me skip up a bit. Once it's actually done the stuff, you can see it here, and eventually you can then use the push button and you can push it to GitHub. So really quite a cool tool, but I don't know if it's game changing. Again, I think like most of these AI things, it's like a wrapper. So basically it's a wrapper around a dockerized version of uh, like a row code or something which is connected up to GitHub, which is pretty cool though. So anyway, if we look down and see how does it work, you um, can access it, blah, 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 click on code. If you want to ask Codex a question, just click ask. And any task can take between one and 30 minutes depending on its complexity. And here's like an example here, obviously like how it's running through with stuff, as you can see. Um, can you resolve this issue and then it'll go and do it. Now, the cool thing is that Codex can be guided by an agents.md file placed in your repository. So kind of like a readme file, but for your agents. And for that, you can then inform Codex how to navigate your code base, which commands to run for testing, and how to best adhere to your project's standard practices. So, you know, it's kind of like it's, you're talking to like a little person, right? Oh, well, not a little person. You know what I mean? So here we have software bench, uh, software engineer bench verified and the codex one you can see it's just slightly better than the O3 high but it definitely is better on the what first attempt and then in their internal tasks you can see that it outperforms all of the others as well so it is their best performing um, one here although interestingly they don't compare it to 4.1 um, but yeah so anyway they have that there and then a little bit about how they do safe agents and stuff um, and then a bit about the comparison of outputs. So on the left here, you would have the output from Codex, literally just that. And on the right, we have O3, which is all of this fluff. So they do talk about it in the video, they're like, "Use were telling us that there's too many comments in the code, so we fixed it. 
you know, and that's basically what they've done. You know, nothing outstanding, nothing like, you know, crazy in that regard. But the automatic cooking up to GitHub and stuff is cool. And I think more than anything, this just does show us how important these wrappers are for agents. So like agentic function, it's kind of like all code, right? When you really think about it, it's just prominent and AI right now because of the state of it. But like essentially you have code that runs and that's kind of it. And loads of people have the similar code which does similar stuff, but it's wrapped in a specific way, branding, etc., tooling and the way that it works. Um, and that's what gives it, gives it the kind of genesis qua type of thing. Because this is in ChatGPT, it will be within the platform. And then you can basically, like, the guy actually talks about it in this here. If you skip to see this guy here, I think he's about to talk about it now, actually. Um, but he starts talking about, basically, how he would have an idea for a PR or something to fix. He would then just send it on his phone, which is actually what I've got up here, which is pretty cool. Um, you can basically then send it on your phone through the ChatGPT app and be like, I think this is a bug. Can you look into it? Or I think this could be updated. It would look a bit better or, or fix this or change this or add a new feature here like this. And then it will go away and do it. And then before you come to your desk, it will then have done the entire thing. You can review the PR, see where it's failed, and then try it again and where it creates a test to make sure that it all works well. And the way that people were talking about it online is basically that it's kind of like having a junior engineer that's on steroids is what they say. And as many as you want, really. Um, they do. They say they have generous rate limiting. I don't know what it is, but it's generous, is what they say. You see here, it starts task, reviews existing code, blah blah blah, and then does the feature before he's even at his office desk. You know, which is pretty cool. But you know, again, it's like that thing. It's all just to do with packaging. Codex on called triage. That was a pretty cool one. Basically, in this one here, the magic he for me of building products is seeing other people. Way. Basically, he talks about good mustache. By the way, see, I'm growing one now. I uh, can't really see it, but... Um, <laughs> so basically, on the on-call triage, he talks about how he can leverage it to essentially help him when he's on-call. So like, you wake up to in the morning, you have to go and fix it. Well, you can run one of these codex tasks against the problem to then try and get it to fix it first, which actually made me think, why don't they cover automatically running it? But in the research preview here of, uh, of it, you get to the end... And they kind of talk about that, like what, this guy talks about it. The guy who kind of does like that, like the vocal fry, proper San Francisco vocal fry. Um, but anyway, um, where am I going here? On call codex, this one here. Flustered myself there. This is actually because I was going to do a new Excalibur draw to show you, but I thought you don't need the visuals. But anyway, the on call guy, uh, they made me think, um, and that's what this guy then talks about, which is essentially instead of, you know, these kind of on call and then going and clicking in and selecting it. So you can see here, like inside ChatGPT, let me go back. I hate when they do this zoom thing. Everyone does it now in their screen recordings and I just, I just don't know what to look at anymore. Like I just can't see everything. But you can select the environment and then he's got a service here and then they've got ones for review, blah, 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 blah. And so he's checking out these. Um, you can see ChatGPT Code Worker is the name of it. Look, oh, oh my God, stop zooming in. This here, ChatGPT code worker, which is pretty cool. And you see that it does its own thing. You can go and check it out and see how it's getting on. Um, blah, blah, blah. Where is it? Oh, there he's on call, doing his tasks on Codex. Um, and there you go. It fixes the problem, adds some comments. Bam, 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 sorted. But yeah, anyway, the guy talks about how he can integrate it into DevOps pipelines and stuff in future, which I think is perfect use case. Because that's the kind of things I'm thinking with this guy here. If you're on call at 2 in the morning or something, right? And you're going to have to then do this or you're going to go wake up and go use the AI. Why can't AI just get automatically triggered, run a couple of times, and then maybe you have to wake up to check it looks all right, watch it's thinking or something. Or that if it works anyway, then they just push that to work, you know, without you having to wake up at all. So that's kind of the future of it. I can see, but again, I think ultimately it all comes down to how much stuff is in your head, how can you get it out, and then how much stuff can you then consume or can the world consume? And so that's the weird thing with AI is like if everyone becomes a manager, you know, everybody sure will get better. So the baseline will be risen up. Like website design, everybody's websites will be better on average across time, um, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately, if everyone can develop every app they've ever wanted, a click of a button, what's the use in any of them? 
and I think that's where branding and stuff matters and, and where we really need to watch where this goes in the future um, especially with like this whole idea of the middle class getting wiped out and stuff you know something to keep an eye on over the next I don't know five years or something we'll see but anyway, that's Codex. <laughs> Bit of a weird note to leave it on. Um, also, they've released, sorry, a Codex Mini, uh, which you can then use locally as well. What's next? They're going to make it better, faster, integrated. It's going to be in everything. It's going to be everywhere. Um, but yeah, anyway. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Do consider checking out the school community. Um, thanks for staying to the end. As a little teaser, we have a 10K. For 410K, we're going to celebrate a brand new school community which is completely for free where inside it you will get all my NAN templates and then updates like these and the AI tools and updates section bef I was going to say before the videos are even released maybe depends how fast I can turn around videos um, but yeah this will be released officially when we hit 10k which will be uh, probably tomorrow which is pretty cool if we go here let's see 9.93k oops ah it's cool, isn't it? Anyway, so, till next time. Hi, Anthony. Welcome, welcome. Um, till next time, I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye.